you for having a look at this short video which deals with the situation regarding the rules affecting port starboard incidents. I'll start just with a quick look at the gate start uh, for the RS 200s. And the weather was quite varied during this event and ended up with quite thick fog. I have selected three port starboard incidents from this event out of the 17 that I observed. In my view there should have been a hail of protests for all of these incidents even if they were not pursued on shore otherwise there is no learning involved. This diagram shows the situation outside the zone with a port and starboard incident. So we have to begin with a uh, port required to keep clear under rule 10 and depending on how close they are if starboard reasonably perceives a risk of contact and alters course while rule 10 applies then P breaches rule 10. Uh, this is purely dependent on the, the reasonable state of mind of starboard and if you wish to look at why this is so then look at World Sailing Case 50, that's 5-0 Case 50. Uh, as port goes into attack uh, the first point, which I call point X, is the moment of passing head to wind while tacking. Uh, rules 10, 11 and 12 switch off. Rule 13 switches on. And this means that port still has to keep clear. And again, if port causes starboard to change course to avoid contact, port breaches rule 13. And again, this must be, it must be reasonable for, for starboard to have uh, done that. And then we come to point Z, which is the moment at which port achieves a close hold course. At this point rule 13 switches off and rules 11 and 15 switch on and under 15 port has to keep clear initially. That's just uh, enough uh, space to enable the situation to settle down without starboard having to change course to avoid and again this is based on perception under case 50. Uh, starboard of course also has to keep clear of port under rule 11 once port is on a close hold course. The further situation that is not shown on this is that if port having achieved a close hold course then bears away to any degree with her causing her stern to swing to starboard if the starboard boat then has to change course to avoid then port is in breach of rule 16.1 so that that's the situation generally going um, port to starboard on a beat. This diagram shows the same situation inside the zone and 
essentially all the same things apply because when rule 18 switches on then 10 11 12 13 etc do not switch off so all we're doing is adding the implications of 18 to the situation so the first thing that happens is that point x when pass when port passes head to wind then in addition to everything else rule 18 switches on and if after this point starboard perceives that there is a risk of contact and luffs above close hauled then port may breach 18.3 subject to the other conditions of that rule uh, but don't forget that luffing above close hauled is only relevant to, to 18 and being in the zone uh, starboard does not have to luff above close hauled for port still to be in breach of 13 and then we come to point Z, which is when port has achieved a close haul course, then port becomes entitled to mark room under 18.2A. So the situation we saw in the previous diagram continues to apply, but with the additions of the Rule 18 implications.